Hello and welcome back to AP Psychology on Educator.com. In this particular segment, we will be taking a look at the experiment itself, the experimental process, and ethical guidelines involved in research with both humans and with animals. Objectives that the College Board lays out for us includes describe how research design drives the reasonable conclusions that can be drawn. For example, experiments are useful for determining cause and effect. The use of experimental controls reduces alternative explanations. So this is going to be all about control. Uh, identify independent and dependent confounding and control variables in experimental designs. And we'll take a look at that. And then distinguish between random assignment of participants to random selection of participants primarily in correlational studies and surveys. And we've already dealt a little bit with that uh, in a previous segment. Also, for more objectives, predict the validity of behavioral uh, explanations based on the quality of research design. For example, confounding variables limit confidence in research conclusions. And finally, discuss the value of reliance on operational definitions and measurement in behavioral research. So that's the, the big picture overview that the College Board wants you to get out of this entire methodology unit. So the experiment, searching for causes. So the uh, whole idea of an experiment is to attempt to determine cause and effect. Last time we looked at correlation, which was looking at the strength of relationships. Now we're looking at A causes B. That's what we're looking for. And so we're going to be looking at experimental variables, experimental and control conditions, experimental effects, and advantages and limitations of experiments. So some terms. An experiment is a controlled test of a hypothesis, hypothesis and testing, in which the researcher manipulates one variable to discover its effect on another. Now I can tell you through the last 21 years that there has been an AP psychology exam, research methods and particularly experiments show up a lot. We haven't gone over the FRQs in great detail, we will, but the FRQs, the free response questions, have a lot of experimental ideas on them. And so this is a, a really key core idea to know about. An experiment, in order to determine and to identify cause and effect relationships, we conduct experiments. We directly vary a condition that you, we might think involves, excuse me, affects a behavior. We create two or more groups of subjects alike in all ways except the condition you are varying. You're like, what? Don't worry, it gets easier. And then record whether the varying condition has any effect in behavior. This is the formal explanation. I'm going to believe it. I'm going to make it much easier. And then disadvantages, it's artificial. It's difficult to generalize to larger populations because you're dealing with a small group of people in your experiment. And then sometimes it's difficult to avoid experimenter effects. That's where an experimenter unconsciously impacts or changes the results or outcome of his research study or her research study. Some vocabulary. We've seen this before. A statement, a hypothesis, is a statement that attempts to predict an outcome within the confines of the experiment. That is to say, how the manipulation of the independent variable, or the IV, changes the dependent variable, or the DV. So what we do is we put the statement uh, that we're using in the experiment in an if-then form. So we say it's a conditional statement. If a, then B. If A happens, then B is what we expect to occur. If A, then B. Independent variable, manipulated by the experimenter. Dependent variable will be affected by the manipulations. And again, when I show you the graphic, it'll make it much more easily understandable. And then unwanted variables are known as extraneous or um, uh, confounding variables. Those are conditions that a researcher wants to prevent from affecting the outcome of the experiment. An example might be if you're doing some research on reaction time, perhaps the number of hours slept before the experiment by a group of subjects could be problematic. So if you're doing research on a college campus, 
and you're doing your research on Saturday morning because that's when everybody can be there, maybe that's not the greatest time to be able to do your experiment on reaction time because maybe people haven't gotten a lot of sleep because it was Friday night and they were out socializing.